The next public speaker is uh, Vicky Van Linden, followed by Barbara Carwright. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, five minutes, please go ahead. Um, I want to thank you, first of all, uh, for allowing me to depute today. I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to speak with you all. And um, as you said, my name is Vicki Van Linden. I'm a board member of Animal Alliance of Canada. And I'm also a founding member of a small grassroots group called Friends of Captive Animals. Uh, so the welfare of captive wild animals has been, uh, you know, of great interest for me for at, at least a decade. I, before I go in to my uh, deputation, I just want to address a few things that have been said here. Um, like uh, Mr. Councillor Karagiannis, um, I had experience with chickens as well. I grew up on a working farm, so um, certain... Um, you know, I assisted my father with the killing of chickens and, um, you know, assisted with the rounding up of animals to load on the slaughter trucks. So I, I come from a very practical background, but I can tell you the animal that, um, and I had no particular empathy, I was not cruel, but having access to animals when you treat animals like objects for profit does not develop empathy um, in people. I certainly didn't see it in the broader community that I was a part of, and I hate to admit that it did not develop that in myself as well. Um, you know, the animal that meant something to me was the family dog. Her name was Lassie, and I think any lessons that I can go back to that were positive were a good old dog. And regarding the concerns about the use of animals for therapy for disabled children or any children, um, in my role as you know the leader of friends of captive animals I worked with some university students at uh, University of Western Ontario to do a study on the um, effects or benefits of exotic animal programs with children such as swim with dolphin programs or these other programs that use exotic animals and that are very sort of the new new age kind of hip thing to do. And what we found was a dog or a rescued horse in every case pr provided the same benefit. So yes, having access to animals can be very beneficial, but it does not need to be an animal whose whole life is going to be denied uh, you know, any kind of fulfillment or, or natural uh, behavior, an animal that's going to live a life in a cage or a glass box, uh, that is not in any way necessary to provide a benefit to children. Uh, a dog can visit the classroom. Uh, a dog can be a mascot. Go on to live, uh, you know, a normal life for a dog and provide all of those benefits. Um, so I just want to say that I was a bit disappointed when I read the current recommendation um, that there was going to, you know, that the recommendation was to stick with a prohibited list. I think that the positive list is a modern, much better way to do things and simply doing things, um, continuing with uh, a way of doing things based on this is what we've always done. Um, obviously, that's not what progressive cities to do. do. Uh, we've certainly seen that Toronto is a very progressive community. So I, I hope that you will, um, you know, that the councillors here will embrace uh, that move to the more modern and progressive approach. Because as we as we know more, as we know better, we should do better. Um, I want to address as well what uh, an earlier uh, deputation referred to in inviting the municipality to not move forward on this uh, because it is, um, you know, it would be better to have the province address it. Uh, I would agree with Councillor de Bearmaker that um, there are many, many aspects of things that should be addressed from the province, but wishing will not make it happen. Uh, we see across Ontario that municipalities lead. On on many things, as another councillor pointed out, on pesticides. But we, municipalities are where we live, and this is where our cultures are developed. Um, you know, if we, if we don't accept these responsibilities as municipalities, we just don't have time to wait for some 
you know, for some provincial government of the future to pay attention to this. Um, and to use as an example, the province of Ontario still has not got a province-wide ban on the, on the private ownership of exotic animals like monkeys and tigers. Thankfully, every major municipality does. So what would that be like if the municipality if municipalities had not banned the keeping of animals like primates and tigers and was waiting for the province to do that. Please wrap up. I'm sorry, wrap up? Wrap up, yeah. Um, okay, so um, I just, I, I want to urge you to uh, accept this challenge. Um, I'd like to address as well this, um, the information we've been hearing from people from Little Rays that about the importance of the educational benefit of this. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Any questions to the deputant? Is um, Deputy Mayor de Bermeke, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much for coming today. Um, just w what are your, your thoughts when you, you hear organizations, and I'll, I'll say credible ones in my opinion, like Little Ray saying, you know, the city should just license everybody? What are your thoughts on that, that approach, I'll call it? Well, um, I think that licensing is is a very important tool of a municipality. So, licenses should not be given up, given out willy nilly. Uh, when a municipality provides a license, um, it's a form of of providing a kind of approval. So no, I would not say that just everybody should automatically receive a license, especially when we're talking about um, the keeping of vulnerable animals who have no voice. Uh, you know, the city would not just license every uh, food uh, business who wanted to. You have to jump through hoops, you have to demonstrate that you're able to meet standards. So uh, licensing should always be linked to important standards. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for your presentation. Barbara Carvalho.